Sunset Sound now has been around for 60 years. It's certainly an important studio in my family. <laughs> but, uh... Sunset Sound was founded by Salvador Tutti Camerata, a trumpet player, arranger, and composer who wrote for Louis Armstrong, Bing Crosby, Billie Holiday, Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, among many others. As I understand it, he ended up owning Eric Satie's publishing. In the 1950s, he went to work for Disney, running their record company, and he started Sunset Sound. My father built Sunset Sound as a personal recording studio for himself because he was hired by Walt to start the Disneyland record label. Early to mid 60s now, Los Angeles at that time was kind of this ground zero for rock and roll like starting to explode. We were fortunate enough to hook up with Electra Records first. Some of those Electra acts you probably know, but The Doors were one of them. Sunset Sound was primarily a film music studio until The Doors showed up with Jack Holzman and Paul Rothschild in 1967 to make the first of the albums they made. The studio then became one of the two or three first call studios in Hollywood. The custom tube console that we had in Studio One, that was what Sunset Sound started with. It was a hybrid, custom-built Longevin console, and that, that's the console that most of the Doors records were done on, and you know some of the really famous stuff here in the '60s. But it was problematic. You know, it was tube. It was always breaking down overheating, it didn't have the headroom, it didn't have the noise floor. My father found this company ran by Bob Bushnell, and Bushnell was a console builder. Bob Bushnell was an engineer who worked for and studied with Bill Putnam, who is the father of modern high-fidelity recording. Bill Putnam founded Universal Audio, and he invented the modern recording console. Bob Bushnell went on to establish Bushnell Electronics and designed and built custom consoles. At the time he built the Sunset Sound console, Dean Jensen, who founded Jensen Transformers, worked for him. Bill Putnam was an executive designer for Bushnell. It was, I think, about 1969 that he commissioned him to build a custom uh, console for Studio One. At the time this console was built, there were very few standards for rec multi-track recording and playback in the studios. Small, focused companies like Bushnell's were commissioned by the different studios to solve the emerging questions posed by the multi-track recording process. Sunset Sound was focused on high-fidelity audio as well as flexibility. This board was one of the early boards that set the standard for what recording would be until the advent of digital recording. Bob Bushnell got this board right. Bob, I guess, typically worked with API type components. So this board is, was based on API. It had 312 mic pres, it had 325 line cards, and it had the 550 at the time EQ. The 2520 operational amplifiers as used by API as well as the API equalizers are key features of this board. The gain structure throughout the console is unique and creates both massive headroom and a glue that binds a mix together in a distinct, even powerful way. The board is all Class A electronics. The combining network is of the highest standard. First of all, it was an extremely reliable console. And these boards were phenomenally sounding. They were very punchy, they were very open, they were very warm. Starting in the late 1960s, great sounding records started coming out of Studio One at Sunset Sound, and the studio's reputation for a powerful, magical sound grew. Studio One became a favorite of several important producers like Paul Rothschild, David Anderley, and Leon Russell. One of the first records we did on on that console when it was put in was Janis Joplin Pearl. So we did that start to finish. So when you hear that Mercedes Benz, that's the console. That's the room. That was done in there. My father was kind of gravitating away from uh, Disney and he got a contract with London Records to do his classical works because he was a composer and a conductor. Obviously London back then had 
a lot of big acts on London Records. One of them was the Rolling Stones. So the Rolling Stones started to come in here. We did the overdubs and the mix on Exile on Main Street. Exile on Main Street was mixed in this room. But it was overdubbed in Studio One. And that was on the T-Bone console. Some of the LA Woman record was done on that board. Dave Mason worked on that console. Linda Ronstadt worked in there quite a bit. She did Don't Cry Now. She did Silver Threads, Golden Needles, Desperado. Those were done on that console. Elton John liked working in Studio One. Doobie Brothers, you know, You Keep Me Running, Living on the Fall Line, One Step Closer, Minute by Minute, China Grove, Taking It to the Street. All those records, all those songs done. Van Halen. So they did the entire number one entry record in there. And they worked on two and three and some of the songs that were tracked and mixed on that console are things like Jamie's Crying, Ain't Talking About Love, Beautiful Girls, You Really Got Me. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Jackson Brown did several records here. He did The Pretender in there. Stevie Nicks worked on that console. A lot of Chris Christopherson and Rita Coolidge records were done on that. Little Feet, Toto. In that room on that console, Earth, Wind & Fire did September. That's kind of a cross section of some of the stuff that's been done in it. Yeah, I think the board performed extremely well for us for almost 15 years. It was a great asset here. It's a great board. Unfortunately, we just sort of outgrew it. He had been working here for years. Uh, we had just finished like, Oh Brother, We're Out Thou, you know, that the film soundtrack. And he comes up to me and he goes, well, I'm thinking about buying this console I came across. And I said, oh, okay. So tell me about it. He goes, well, it's your old console. And I go, my old console? I go, what old console? He goes, the console that was in Studio One. I was just, my, my mind just started spinning like, okay, that's the end of T-Bone. You know, he, you know, I mean, he's going to buy our old console, he's going to set up shop, and it's like, he just doesn't, doesn't need to come here anymore. So, um, of course, that's what happened. I don't ever tell stories about the work I've done with artists, but I can tell you this. This board has been cured by the music that has run through it in the same way as a great old Fender Tweed amplifier or a great old Gretsch Duo Jet grows in character through years of use. It has aged well. I don't know how any of that happens. I think that great music heating up the electronics gives them character. But I can tell you with absolute certainty that when we run a piece of music from Pro Tools through the board, the harmonic complexity and harmonic distortion the digital technology can't comprehend or reproduce have been recreated and added back in by the board. The mixes run through the board as opposed to the mixes done in Pro Tools are significantly more vivid and exciting with more depth and clearer imaging. I'm selling this console because I'm not making that many records anymore. Life has taken me in other directions and I'm no longer, I no longer have need for a studio. But I have had a great run with this console. It has been an important part of all the work I've done for the last 18 or so years. I think it's a, it's a great testament to Bushnell and uh, the team who put it together. It's a piece of history, but it's a working piece of history. I'm sure it'll make someone very happy with it and hopefully keep producing music for another umpteen decades. One can hope. I hope it goes to someone who loves powerful, deep sounding, high fidelity music and who will use it for what it was made for to make incredible sounding records.